In the late 1800s, Reginald Fessenden was one of many scientists intrigued with the concept of spark gap transmission. He thought it could be the basis for the next great leap in communication. If only the sparks could generate waves of energy strong enough to carry the human voice. At the time, the idea of sending a message wirelessly was revolutionary. The telephone had only recently been invented and required cables to carry a signal. And so did the telegraph when it sent out messages in Morse code. But demand was growing for communication that didn't need wires, especially in the shipping industry. The problem with maritime transportation in terms of communication is that once a vessel leaves the port, until it reaches its destination, or at least approaches land at a very short range, it's unable to communicate. Um, so there's an understandable desire for safety reasons, for commercial reasons, uh, to be able to communicate uh, wirelessly with, with these vessels. To transmit a voice across an ocean without using wires would be a huge breakthrough especially if it was invented by a man such as Fessenden, who didn't even finish high school. As a young man, he worked for Thomas Edison, laying cables under the streets of New York. He worked in literally digging ditches, but because he was clearly one of the brighter people in, in that crew, he soon achieved a promotion and was eventually hired by Edison's own lab, and very quickly was appointed Edison's chief chemist. Fessenden proved to be naturally brilliant at everything, from chemistry to electrical engineering. His brilliance also came to the attention of another big name, Westinghouse, where he worked using electromagnetic radiation on instruments such as X-ray machines. He was lured by George Westinghouse himself to what is now the University of Pittsburgh to run the electrical engineering department there. Fessenden realized electromagnetic radiation could be the key to a breakthrough in wireless communication. A few decades earlier, scientists had discovered that electromagnetic radiation was everywhere and produced invisible waves of varying lengths and frequencies. Everything from X-rays and gamma rays to radio waves. Fessenden wanted to use radio waves as a type of highway to carry a voice signal. In order to do so, he would have to create radio waves artificially. Because the slow-moving voice signal needed a starting point where it could be linked to a speedier radio wave. That was why Fessenden wished to use spark gap technology to create artificial radio waves. It's two balls, and a charge is built up between the two balls. So literally, a spark will go from one electrode to another. That causes an electromagnetic wave to be emitted. It's invisible, but it, it can be very powerful. But there was a problem. Radio waves produced by the spark method faded quickly, so we're not able to carry understandable voice signals. It also made a dreadful noise. Because essentially spark gaps create artificial static. That's exactly what they are. His reports from 1899 indicated that he heard very little except sparking. While Fessenden pondered how to solve this problem, a European made headlines around the world. On the 12th of December, 1901, Marconi transmitted a wireless signal across the Atlantic using Morse code. But the achievement of Marconi didn't deter Fessenden from his own objective. Fessenden had held a suspicion that spark gap technology was not the solution to transmitting radio waves. He then considered a new idea the theory of continuous, unbroken waves. He understood that if he just kept throwing the rocks in, it would approximate waves that never stop. 
Fessenden wondered that if one strong, long, continuous radio wave was created, would it be able to carry a sound such as the human voice for hundreds, even thousands of kilometers? A continuous wave is very simple. It contains a constant amplitude, that is, the, the, the distances between the tops and the bottoms of the peaks is exactly the same. Fessenden thought it might be possible to create a continuous radio wave using an alternator, which turns mechanical energy into electrical energy. But to do so, he would need a machine hundreds of times more powerful than any alternator available at the time. And this was a formidable problem for engineers. He wrote probably the greatest electrical engineers in the world at General Electric, asking them if they could build such a device, and they told him they could not but they would work on it. In the summer of 1906, General Electric delivered a high-powered alternator. But even this machine wasn't powerful enough, so Fessenden spent months making adjustments to produce an even stronger electrical current. Finally, he was ready to test his theory. He connected the alternator to a microphone at one end, and to the world's largest antenna at the other. This was Fessenden's theory. A person would speak into the microphone, creating sound waves. The sound waves would then travel on the much stronger, faster-moving radio waves created by the alternator. The alternator would then send this composite or modulated wave to the antenna which transmitted it to a receiver in some faraway place. It's much like a hitchhiker getting onto a bus at the transmitter and then getting off the bus at the receiver. On Christmas Eve in 1906 in Brant Rock, Massachusetts, Fessenden put his theory to the test. Hundreds of kilometers away in the Atlantic Ocean, ships received a message in standard Morse code. What have you got, lad? Be prepared for something of great interest to follow. It was a prior warning from Fessenden, who wanted to ensure every sailor was paying attention to what happened next. It was an astonishing sound. For the first time ever, a voice was transmitted over a great distance without cables or wires. Fessenden had successfully transported sound on a continuous radio wave, a theory called amplitude modulation, or AM radio. Far earlier than any other wireless inventor, Fessenden understood how AM radio was going to work. It wasn't until the 1920s, however, that the broadcasting boom began to take off, but it spread like wildfire, faster than probably any other technology has ever spread, including the internet. Fessenden didn't become rich or famous from his invention, but there was one victory. His Italian competitor, Marconi, had to admit that Fessenden was right and subsequently bought a license to use his patent. In 